Welcome to the third stop on the Grand Escalante Express. First stop was the Grand Canyon. Second stop was Zion. Third stop is Bryce Canyon. Let's go. From Bryce Canyon in Utah and you'll notice that the landscape around here looks a lot different than the landscapes from the other Colorado Plateau parks and the story is kind of the same deposition this area was a big lake between 40 and 20 million years ago and then there was uplift and then erosion but the different part of the story here that's different than arches or Zion is the type of weathering and erosion that occurs here and if you notice behind me are these beautiful amazing spires of rock and those are the result of a type of physical weathering. And when this area got uplifted, it got fractured. And these fractures fill with water. And this area experiences freezing and thawing for 200 days of the year, which means any water that gets in these fractures freezes and expands about 9%. So you can imagine the pressure that's put on these rocks as that ice expands. And this happens daily. 200 times a year and that's enough to pry apart even the strongest rocks and what's left are these spires that are called hoodoos they're called hoodoos because they're really creepy looking one of the things you'll notice in this area are these these fracture sets and so this is where water will percolate down and weaken the rock you'll weather it and then in the process the erosion will transport that material away and eventually these fractures that are perpendicular to each other form the pinnacles and the hoodoos that we see all around us. It's pretty amazing. This is really chalky, really, really weathered. So if you look at that really amazing rock behind me, it looks pretty interesting. It looks like a big rock is placed on a smaller rock, but actually this rock formation is the result of differential weathering. And that's when the rock layer on the bottom is more susceptible to erosion because of its chemistry than the rock on top. So it wears away faster, leaving that big knob of more resistant material. And it's most likely that the layer on the bottom has more calcite and is uh, more limey. Uh, most of these deposits were in a big lake called Lake Claron. And some of the types of sedimentary rocks that get deposited is limestone. Limestone is made out of the mineral calcite. That can be hard to identify, but there's one telltale sign that geologists use. And it should effervesce when we put hydrochloric acid, dilute hydrochloric acid. So if you put that on the rock and you see what happens, you see there's a little chemical reaction. It's carbonation. So that's telling you this is limestone. The pink and white limestones we see in Bryce sit near the top of the stratigraphic column and form part of the tertiary Claron formation formed between 54 to 35 million years ago. Underlying these rocks are shales and sandstones that are more prominent in other parts of the Colorado Plateau to the south and west. As we wandered out of the maze of intricate formations, we were left with a sense of awe at how weathering and erosion can create such amazing structures. I mean, really, you've seen one hoodoo, you've seen them all. 